G'day mates, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today's video is going to be a bit of a different one. I really just want to give my thoughts on the current state of Fortnite, whether I think it's going in the right direction, and how long I think until it'll die. You've probably seen a lot of these videos in the past, and I always get asked for my opinion on the game. When it comes towards the end of new seasons, I like to do like, you know, what's my wish list for the next season? What did I think of this season? This one's going to be a bit of that combined, but I also just want to talk about my overall view of Fortnite and why I am actually starting to get a bit scared for the direction of it. I have to start off by saying this, please actually watch the video all the way through or give my opinions a chance before you comment about them because I know that this topic always gets a little bit heated and I want you to know that all this is coming from a place of I absolutely love this game. This game made my career and I have my dream job. And as far as competitive goes, I'm still as much in love with this game as I was when I very first started watching competitive. Maybe more so. So a lot of what I'm talking about is actually coming from just playing the game and how I see content being made on the game in general because I have never seen such a lack of content being made on Fortnite, especially on stream, than ever before. It is undeniable right now that content creators are not playing Fortnite or are not making content on Fortnite. And again, a lot of people getting really, are just falling out of love with the game. I can't see the player numbers, so I don't know how many casuals are playing the game right now, but I have to imagine for coming out of the back of lockdown, a lot of people, you know, kind of sought gaming and gaming went to this huge rise. I know it's going to fall off, but just from what I can see generally or the vibe that I get, the player base right now would have to be probably pretty low or at least people are pretty disheartened going into the next season and I want to talk about why that might be. I'm of course going to start this discussion with the map and I know I've talked a lot about map change in the past. A lot of people know it's a very sore topic with me but I've never actually broken it down properly and with this tool Fortnite.gg's map evolution tool I want to show you a few things. I first want to talk about how much content with the map specifically we got in chapter one but again I know chapter one was a different time. You know that's when Epic was booming. Everything was exploding. I get that. There wasn't COVID. People weren't in lockdown. I get that but I also then want to compare to you what four seasons of chapter one look like compared to four seasons of chapter two. So this is Fortnite.gg. This is their map evolution tool. You can go in and play around with yourself. But let me very quickly show you what we got as far as map changes in chapter one. So this is the map we started with. This was the day one map. This was the end of chapter one. Pretty massive, significant changes, you would say, right? Like really just an entirely different map, an entirely different feel, look, just huge improvements, okay? Now, if I do the same thing for chapter two, and brace yourself, this actually does make me genuinely pretty sad. This is what we got. This was the start of chapter two. This is now. So start of chapter two, now. Yes, it looks nicer. They've changed the colors, but that doesn't affect the gameplay. That's just how it looks. The colors didn't change in game, but almost nothing has changed. Now, I know you might be thinking, Ozzy, you know, chapter one was longer. It actually wasn't. So Fortnite launched on 26th of September, 2017. And then chapter two started on October 15, 2019. So just a little bit over two years. But that means October 15, 2019, we are now in September. Again, I'm Australian, don't freak out. That means 1st of September. So it's almost been two years. So the difference that I showed you first was two years. Right now, we're m one month off two years and we are pretty much at the exact same thing. But I'll do credit. I'm not going to just try to make this all negative. I'm not just trying to prove my point. I know a lot of you guys are thinking there were some major changes within chapter two. And I get that. Chapter two, the water season and the Stark season and then even, you know, season two a little bit was pretty drastic, right? So let's go to the water season or let's go, let's go uh, season two. Let's go season two of chapter two and let's compare that to then obviously water level. So chat season three, that's a huge change. So one day of Fortnite, we went to bed on this map. This was going to be the end of season two or season end of season. Yeah, season two. And then we woke up to this map. That's a big deal, right? We went to bed with this and woke up to this. The game felt fresh. It felt amazing. There was water. There was sharks. There's a whole bunch of cool new items. There was so many new drops to go and explore. The game felt truly so different. Then if you compare this to what we've got since this, this is what we got in a single season. If I now plug that one in up here and I pick the water level and then I compare that to what we've got since then to now, it's just massive, but nothing has happened other than this. Once the water started to go down, once we got to the water season being over, so we got this chapter, that's all that's changed since then. 
within like a year and a half, I believe, or at least over a year since that happened. Yes, in this time, we got Stark added when we had Stark, but again, Stark was in later in the season. So which season was Stark? Was Stark in here? No, that's past that. So once later in then, we got Stark. So Stark's in now. There you go. So later in that season, we got Stark. And that was a big, significant change that made the game feel a lot more fun. But even then, compared to that chapter one changes, like I talked about, it really wasn't that much. So let's go to, let's go chapter one, season four to chapter one, season eight. So this is what four seasons gave us back then just crazy levels of difference, different biomes, different POIs, like the block got added, Lazy Lagoon got added, the whole volcano system, all, all this area changed down here, even just the fact that biomes made it feel and look so different, and then you do the exact same thing for the current spot we are right now, oops, sorry guys, you do the same thing for where we're at now, and if I go into, you know, go to that season, yep, and then you go to where we are now, basically, it's just... You can understand the frustration, but like I said, I do understand that Epic now, you know, we've had lockdown. They've talked about how back in the day when Fortnite was exploding, they were throwing so much money at it. The developers were getting overworked. They were just really, really stressed out. I get that. So I'm not expecting the same level of change, but I was talking about it on stream today. I would argue that the amount of changes we got in chapter one compared to chapter two is about 10% or less. When you think about the weekly updates, the events, the map changes, the new items, I truly think we're getting about 10% of the level of content that we got in chapter one. I'm not expecting the same level as chapter one, but I'm expecting a little bit more than 10%. And I was trying to get my head around where is that effort going? And I think that's where I'm getting lost in this position of frustration of what is Epic doing? Like with the resources, Epic is still making a lot of money. They might not be making as much as they were before, but what are they doing with those resources and that money? And the only thing I can be led towards is collaborations. And that usually hits people a, a bit at a sore spot. Again, the Ariana Grande concert for me sums it up perfectly. Was it fun? Yes. Did I enjoy the Ariana Grande concert? Yes, but it was... 10 minutes long? It was a 10 minute concert. The amount of effort and time that would have gone into that concert compared to what could have gone into the map is ridiculous. That concert had entirely new maps, essentially. You get, you, there was that weird thing with all the pink trees. You went into that crazy area where you were like going through rooms and it was teleporting and things were shifting. Like you were sliding around on that sludge. Like that was all so much effort and so much time. Was it worth compared putting that same amount of effort and time into the map or into the game? For me, no, but that's what I want to talk about. Potentially, it's not just that Epic's doing anything wrong. Maybe they're just not going the direction that I want it to, and that's where I'm getting upset. Maybe a lot of you guys absolutely love the Ariana Grande concert, and that was worth it for you, but I've got to imagine a lot of the people who came to play the Ariana Grande concert or watched it, watched the Ariana Grande concert, and then didn't play Fortnite afterwards. But it's a lot of people like I imagine you and myself who've been playing the game for years, play for hours upon hours that I wish Fortnite was catering a little bit more to. But I don't talk to an audience. A lot of you guys aren't as young, young as what a lot of people are on YouTube. Maybe the, you know, six, seven, eight year old players are on Fortnite really did care about the Ariana Grande concert. And maybe they don't play the game as much as me. So they're not getting bored of the map in the same way that I am. But that's where I think I'm getting scared. Is that who Fortnite is gonna start catering towards? The people who play it very casually, very occasionally and they're gonna jump on because there's a new Will Smith skin in the store or is it because Ariana Grande's in the game but what about the players who want to play it all day every single day and have that same sense of fun and excitement that they used to have or at least to a certain degree again I'm not expecting huge maps every other week like back in the day but we have logged on from season to season and just seen almost no change the perfect example would be this most recent season and maybe that's why I'm getting to the point of being so frustrated because the most recent change we got, so we logged off, so we logged off to what's on the left and we logged into what was on the right. So that, this was the end of last season and this was the start of this season. It's sad to look at. It, it's a change of a couple colors. The middle of the map got exploded and that's it, right? Like all the changes was the spire, wasn't it? And we we were we were promised all these crazy map changes throughout the season. Like this season's gonna be incredible, this season's gonna be amazing, everything's gonna change. And what has realistically happened? Coral went into the sky for a little bit. 
then it's back to normal. Slurpy Swamps went into the sky for a little bit, and then half the loot got taken out of it, sucked into a spaceship, and now it's called Sludgy Swamps. It's got less loot, and it's one of the most bleak and depressing drops I've ever seen on the map. And now, you know, less than two weeks until the season ends, we're about to have Corny go up into the sky. Is that really that crazy of a season? Like we were promised that things were gonna go ballistic. We saw that Tilted was in the loading screen. We thought that Tilted was gonna get put back somewhere on the map. We thought this mothership was gonna go around like nuking different drop spots and, and nothing really happened at all. Again, I don't wanna be that guy complaining and I already know the comments are gonna be like, Ozzy, yesterday's video, you know, you were complaining a lot and now you're complaining a lot again. Just know it comes from me absolutely loving this game and wanting it to thrive and wanting it to succeed that I get this frustrated if they just make some map changes i'm gonna be the happiest guy in the world and you best believe i'm gonna make entire videos like i am now talking about how good the map is and talking about how fun the new season is and i'll make guides on how to use the new items like that is what i do i feel like i'm very fair and very balanced between my praise and my criticism it's just because and i think i'm not alone in this right now fortnite's not in a great state where there's more criticism than praise to address a criticism that I'm gonna get a lot, and I know you guys are gonna be saying in the comments, Ozzy, maybe you're just burnt out on Fortnite, maybe just move on from it. But I've been playing games since I was three years old. I know when I'm burnt out on a game and I'm just playing it because there's nothing better. And right now, gaming is a little bit stale, that's fair. But Fortnite has the core elements that will never be beaten building, editing, including aiming into this, just the battle royale genre, just everything about it at its core is still so phenomenal. And I don't think it's even gone anywhere near to its full capped potential. There is still so much that can be done. I just double back onto the fact that either Fortnite is going in a very different direction to me and they just have different views on what the game should be. And it's their game. It's their right to do that. Or they're getting complacent or they're being lazy for a certain reason. And from everyone that I've ever dealt with or worked with, that Epic, they seem like they love the game and they love Fortnite and they want only the best for it. So I've always just assumed there's someone above them, whether it be like the shareholders, whether it be like the investors or someone that's making it more difficult for them to implement their changes. So I want to make sure when, I, when I'm when i talking about negativity, I'm not trying to direct it at any one person or I think anyone is the issue or they're at blame. It's a billion dollar company. It's really hard to get things changed quickly. But I think as a company, the entire mindset must be shifting because the effort is clearly still there when it comes to certain aspects like skin development, like collaborations, like event development, but the game seems to be being left behind and that makes me sad. I know today's video has been a bit more negative and I'm going to do a video a bit more positively focused in a few days or next week about what I want from next season and how I think the game can be better because today a lot of my frustrations have just come down to just either lack of effort or a complete change in direction for Fortnite and I can't really just give a solution to change that. I can't be like, hey Epic, just start making the game good again. You know what I mean? So I understand that and I want you guys to know that I still absolutely love this game competitively. It still is and will always be the best game ever for me and every time I watch a tournament or make any content around competitive, it is just so much fun to me and I have a genuine passion for it. So maybe it's just me falling out of love with playing it, but I know at its core, I absolutely love the game and I think it can still be saved for me. And it was just a topic I needed to talk about because I talked about it a lot on stream today and I get asked my, uh, my opinion on this topic a lot. So I want to have a, a video that I can direct people to, but just know this isn't going to start to become my content. I'm not just going to make videos complaining and saying the game is terrible. I'm I'm still going to make my normal videos talking about competitive grand finals. I am so excited for it. I'm going to be doing a massive stream this weekend. I'm going to be commentating it, casting it. And despite the issues of teams getting dropped on, teams getting contested, I'm overall still going to really enjoy the experience of watching it. And I'm always going to make that content pretty much until I imagine this game does truly die because it holds a very, very special place in my heart. Just know that this frustration and negativity, it, it comes from a place of me caring because I love this game so much and I want to see it go back to its former glory or better yet reach its full potential because i don't think it even has yet all right guys that does it for another video i said everything i needed to say i hope you enjoyed the video if you made it this long thank you so much for hearing me out if you did enjoy the video please chuck a like on it of course let me know in the comment section down below your thoughts on anything i talked about today if you haven't already please subscribe to the channel it would mean the world to me thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed and i'll see you in the next one